every day. There's over 200,000 new websites online. Think about that. Over 200,000 new websites. Of course, some of them are going to be spammy websites, but a lot of them are going to be blog websites. People who are hoping to get passive income and the majority of them will not make it. But why? Why won't they be able to drive this significant amount of traffic, a considerable amount of traffic to the website to make passive income? Why is that? That's what we're trying to crack here in this channel. And that's why I made this video. The 10 things you can do for SEO on a new website. And SEO is this, how we get people to your website. So let's jump into it. Tip number 10. So we're starting from the top. We're going down more valuable as we go on. So tip Number 10 is to have a fast website for goodness sake, because if you have a bound, how many times, let me just say this, how many times do I have someone reach out to me, a potential client, and they want to do SEO work because they understand the value of getting more traffic, but their website is molasses slow, right? That's a big problem. You have to have a good foundation when you're starting a website. How can you do that? You know, have a good theme, a lightweight theme. I use Astro Pro almost exclusively for all my websites. Why? It's lightweight. It's customizable. It's good. Now, if you have an existing website, no problem. You can check this. Go to Google Site Speed Test. Type that into Google. You click on the Page Speed Insights. Type your URL in here, and it's going to spit out a result. Right, mobile, mobile, if it's above 60, you know, I'm okay with it. Even 50, we can work with. But if it's like in the red majorly, you have a problem. Now, tip number nine, a very, very obvious, a lot of people talk about this, but a lot of people get it wrong, is pick the right niche. This video here goes into 10 good niches to consider, right? Check that video out after this video. But if you pick the right niche, you are going to propel yourself for more success. You're going to have less boundaries to break through, less competition, an easier time. Tip number eight is pick an expandable topic to talk about initially. Pick one thing, one thing, and write 30 to 60 blog posts about that one thing. But here's where everyone gets mixed up. It's an expandable topic. What does that mean? Here's an example. Bonsai Mary, one of my experimental websites, we're writing about philodendron right now. Very cool plant, very beautiful plant. When I am done, my articles, whatever it may be, I think I'm doing about 200 on that, I'm going to move to another indoor plant that's expandable. The website can be about indoor plants, right? But I'm going to talk about one plant to begin with. So with your niche, talk about one thing initially on your website. Don't talk about a ton of things, right? 30 articles for one thing. Move on to a new thing. 30 articles. Move. So you need to go deep on a topic. Stop doing a shotgun blast on everything. That's not going to work as well. Tip number seven, almost equally as important, is structure your initial content push. Have you ever played the game, right? 52 card pickup. Have you ever played that game? 52 card pickup. You take a bunch. It's, it's like a it's just like a joke kids play on each other. Take a deck of cards, throw it on the ground. 50 card, two card pickup. Pick it up. Ha ha. Right. You got to pick it up. You got to reorganize it. How you should see your initial 30 to 60 or whatever it may be blog articles. That initial one. It's 52 card pickup right? It's 30 card pickup. You don't know what order they're in. You've gone out and you've done the keyword research. Watch other videos. I have a lot of videos on that. I have a masterclass going very detailed in the keyword research and other things. But pretend with the 30 things you're going to write about, you don't know how they're supposed to be organized. And then you say to yourself, I need to write a book on this. And this first 30 blog articles are merely chapters of a book. And I need to nest them. This one goes here and this one under it and it refers. Just make a book out of it. And then when you have your book, you have your chapters, you know how to interlink them. Interlinks are merely just pointing to a different blog post through a clickable link. You know, you've seen the blue links on a website. Click the link, go here. Tip number six sounds very, very simple, but so many people get this wrong. Have the most important information, right? The most important information immediately, immediately, in every sense of the word, in every sense of the word, right? If you have a sentence in the beginning, right under a header, here's your header, blah, 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 blah. And then your paragraph text, have that keyword that you're going for immediately, ASAP. Furthermore, the most important information of that blog pertaining to that keyword needs to be high in that article, right? Because that's what Google says in their guidelines. Supplementary information is supposed to be down here. The most important stuff, do not bury the lead. Do not make someone wait for the important stuff because Google cares. 
users care. That's going to help you immensely. Tip number five, right? You're going to be surprised at this one. If you have a new website and you're thinking about doing a website and you want to do SEO, do not get distracted by the AI buzz. What do I mean by this? There's a new AI thing coming out every day. Learn a little bit about it. Learn how it can expedite your process, but do not get engrossed in it every single day, right? Pick your workflow, figure out what works for you, and drive it home. Focus, double down. Do not get distracted. Tip number four for a new website is that human written content ranks better in Google than AI written content. That is my experience. I've done hundreds of blog posts both ways, right? I have a team of real writers, excellent professional writers, and they will beat your AI written content every time. So does that mean never use AI? No, it doesn't mean never use AI. Use it as a tool and use your brain to go back in. If you want to use AI at all, go back in and edit it and make it tighter. As you understand more SEO skills, realize humans, we still have a competitive advantage when it comes to creative writing and getting Google to rank our articles. Tip number three is use templates where you can. If you have that initial 30 to 50 blog articles you're writing, figure out, ask yourself, is there a template that would work for this? This is what I mean. If you're writing about the best beaches in California, can you have a template that works for each of those articles? Yes, you can. And in doing so, you get to craft an excellent template, the excellent head and structure, and you can replicate it and it goes faster. And not only do your processes get faster, but you are ensuring that you're hitting on all the relevant things that that particular type of article should hit on. In the masterclass, I go over it. We call it a blanket template. It is absolutely insane how powerful they are when they're employed on a website and they begin to get traction. So before we get to tip number two, I want to tell you, I've been alluding to it in the video, right? You heard it, the masterclass. That is for people who already have traction on their website. They have some visitors, but they need to take it to the next level, right? If you don't know how to create a website, that masterclass is not for you, right? If you're struggling with WordPress, like how to actually do that, that's a different type of masterclass. I don't have that yet. This one is an advanced one. We get nitty gritty, we go granular, right? So let's jump into tip number two. Would you believe that Google cares about this one human quality, this one human trait? Tip number two is SEO persistence. Persistence is the tip, right? It's going to determine, and hear me out, it's going to determine whether or not you're successful in life. A lot of things, persistence, don't give up. But why does Google care about it for SEO, right? Why do we have to have a blog post out every week at minimum? Why? Because if you go dark on Google, Google knows this, and they're going to stop indexing your stuff. So when you start a website, make sure you're putting like a blog out a week at minimum preferably two to five, right? I think a new blog, in my opinion, you can put five blog posts out a day without Google dinging you. If you start to do AI content, you're doing 10, 15 a day, then you're playing with fire. And if you're playing with fire, you're doing these huge amounts of blog posts, you might as well consider that URL, that blog gone already. Count it off as an experiment. If you're doing a new website with more than five blog posts, a day. Rule of thumb, just trickle them out as you start a website. But once you start a schedule, right? Google knows what my YouTube schedule is, right? YouTube is a product of Google. They know I do three to five YouTube videos a week. If I want to be successful on this platform just as a blog, I need to maintain that because not only are my users expecting it, but Google is expecting it Two. Tip number one, keyword research. Keep it simple. Keyword research. I'll say it one more time. You need to learn how to do proper keyword research or you're not going to make it. I would argue it's 70% of an SEO's worth is proper keyword research. No, it's not just living inside of an SEO tool such as Ahrefs or any of these like SEMrush. No, proper keyword research starts with ideation and then analyzing and then verifying with data-driven decisions such as those tools. Keyword research, a lot of videos on that in this channel. I hope you like this. The top 10 things you can do. Check out the masterclass, subscribe, like, share the video with a friend. We have Word Galaxy 2, didn't even mention that. Anyways, I appreciate you, awesome community, and I'll see you.